A playlist original. Hey, what's up? It's your host, Tori, and who is ready to be petty? Welcome back to another episode of RTBP. I am so glad you're here. Today is a really fun episode. I have Diana True from TikTok on, and we are talking about our favorite 2000s girlies, the Selena doc and the new Pitch Perfect movie. I want to say we talked about Selena and Francia's relationship in more detail on episode 117, and I Actually, this was like huge and obviously not planned, but it was like kind of iconic. But in the Selena doc, Selena goes to Kenya on a wee trip. And if you all know, I just covered the wee charity scandal on episode five on Patreon with Emily Rose from It's Become a Whole Thing and Lisa, one of my friends from real life. It was shocking to see Selena on the trip just because she has been involved in the charity and we detail that in the episode for a really long time but volunteerism is out of vogue and it was like kind of cringe to see her there so we don't get into it too much on this episode but if you want a full deep dive of why the charity is problematic why it shut down operations in Canada how it was scamming people and which celebrities were involved because trust me it's like your faves Selena Demi Meghan Markle Jennifer Lopez Macklemore (laughs) your fave Macklemore Um, but like literally tons of people really recognizable people we talk about all of that over on patreon our upcoming patreon episode is going to be with katie from alpaca my bags we talk all about pet peeves while traveling like why do people wear a full outfit like jeans or high heels on airplanes we talk about responsible traveling how you can be a responsible traveler sustainability and then of course celebs like performativity and private jet usage and like shit like that so it's super super fun we I think wove in a lot of my favorite things which is celebrities and her favorite things which is like you know responding to the climate crisis and we wove those in really really well so you can check that out on patreon.com slash rtbp podcast and lastly before we get to today's episode I want to shout out patron Laura I am obsessed with you obviously you know this and I feel like every time I'm like a stress mess which is like more often than I would like and I'm messaging you and you're like just chill (laughs) just chill out you're doing fine you're like not letting anyone down and I appreciate that so freaking much like I cannot even explain how much I appreciate that love when you send me shit I feel like I say that for every patron but it's like every time people send me things I'm just like I feel fulfilled in my life I feel like I've made so many cool internet friends so Laura, thank you so much for being an awesome petty Betty. I appreciate and love you so much. Okay, let's get to my conversation with Diana from TikTok. Without further ado, here's Diana. I'm back with a very special guest, Diana True Knox, aka at Diana True on TikTok. Diana, how are you? I'm amazing. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for coming on RTBP. I'm so excited. Me too. I I love the concept, (laughs) the podcast concept. It's excellent. 10 out of 10. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. So I first found your TikToks, I guess like, I don't know, maybe a few months ago and I reached out because I was like, I love your takes on all of this pop culture nonsense. Uh, Why did you decide to start a TikTok and why did you choose pop culture to talk about? Um, first of all, what video did you see first? Do you remember? I'm like always, uh, always wonder like what people. Yeah, find. what I don't know. It was probably something Kardashians related. Probably that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I started TikTok. Okay, so back up by like college and career. Like I've always loved marketing. I was a business marketing major at Clemson and. Basically, since 2016, that's like been my job as marketing for different, um, usually fashion in the fashion industry. That's still what I'm doing now. Mm. So I've always loved marketing. I've always loved pop culture and fashion. And I think that one of the best ways to go viral is by relating things to pop culture. So 
I started my TikTok, I think in 2019, but didn't really take it seriously till 2020. I worked at a luxury department store and I was like their head of marketing. And what I did basically was start my TikTok there and I would compare, I would like do different outfits. Like this is what Kim Kardashian would wear. This is what like even Disney princesses would wear. And I would try on the different outfits and get a bunch of views. So that's really how I got my following. But I also have always loved like to talk shit about anything pop culture related. It's just like my pastime. It's it's my passion. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that on TikTok and kind of just going viral that way. But I've kind of left the fashion part of TikTok, which I wish I didn't but I also quit my job so I didn't have access to like all the designer clothes um (laughs) anymore because you know I was not I did not own any of those clothes they were (laughs) right off the rack and then right back on the rack um (laughs) so now I just don't wear makeup and kind of give my hot takes on things I loved also pop culture history like I wish that colleges Mm. would give a pop culture history class and I could be the professor it's like my, that's my new dream and I think that's I think that's like where we're headed in this world because there's classes on like Taylor Swift and like Harry Styles at colleges so pop culture history very important really it, it really is important people think I'm crazy mm. but I mean you look at like what Paris Hilton was wearing in 2002 and then look at what doors are selling now it's literally the same and it's all inspired by pop culture and I just like love how the two intertwine and they're so closely related so that's kind of what I talk about now is pop culture history news a lot of paparazzi stuff Mm -hmm. that's popped off Mm -hmm. lately um yeah I love go I love when videos are viral and when I like open the app and have like 100 new followers it's like a high so um (laughs) yes that's that's kind of how it started. And once I got a following, I just like kind of wanted more and more and more. And I also had a baby three months ago. So I kind mm. of fallen off a little bit. But as soon as he's like sleeping through the night and I'm alive again, I think mm-hmm. I want to get back to it. Amazing. Amazing. But yeah, you're totally right. Like I also just saw that Paris Hilton is like re not relaunching, I guess just launching a line of like tracksuits that look like juicy esque. Yeah. It's so smart it's so smart and it it's yeah it's wild how these things come back what would be your like main research point or like thesis statement if you did teach a a college class on pop culture oh my gosh that's a loaded question like yeah. my main point what I don't know like what would you want to focus on Something like that. Like I've done videos on Juicy Couture before and I'll do like, like I would like pretend it's like 2003 or something. But like the year was 2003 and Paris Hilton just stepped out in what seems to be pajamas, but it's actually a velour tracksuit. Um, and she's, cause it did the like pajamas and I feel like people never went out like that before. And then mm-hmm. now they do all the time. It was like mm-hmm. a cultural reset. Totally. There's something about trends and how, like, for example, now I just heard a theory about the Kardashians. So I'm obsessed with, and I'm not just mm-hmm. obsessed with them because they're the Kardashians. I think they're geniuses. Um, and they're like, they are pop culture. They literally yes. are pop culture. But you know, the Balenciaga pink one, what is it called? A jumpsuit that Kim wore with the feathery thing to SNL. Um, of course. I actually, side note, was that for Halloween last year. And that's the night I got knocked up. But Yes. Okay. I, I definitely, that is that, that's your TikTok profile picture, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Iconic. Love that. Yes. Okay. So it, it works. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I got knocked up that night by my husband. Mm-hmm. So it's fine. Mm-hmm. Not that it wouldn't be if it wasn't my husband, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made it a little bit easier. Um, yes. <laughs> very anti Kardashian of me. Um, so <laughs> she wore that tracksuit or tracksuit jumpsuit like a year ago right like probably Mm -hmm. September I would think because it was October when I wore it so September and then Mm -hmm. she just wore jumpsuits for a year never stopped still hasn't stopped I'm over it but that's besides the point but then Good American comes out with a jumpsuit that looks exactly like it like a month ago and they're selling it and she started the trend and now like her sister's business is selling 
cheaper version of that. And I, and she's starting all these trends. And then they, once people get, you know, the hang of it first, it was like, wow, she's really wearing that. No one would wear that except for Kim Kardashian. A year later, people would wear that because in February at fashion week, I wore a black jumpsuit, which I thought I would never wear in my life, like a onesie type thing. But I wore it because Kim did in the back of my mind, even if I don't think it's because of Kim, it was because of Kim. Yeah. And now yeah. like good Americans selling it. And so it's like, they're starting by doing this crazy stuff and then we get used to it. We see it a lot and then their business start to sell it. And it's just crazy because they're like that in so many different ways. Now, skincare, vitamins, home cleaning goods, like the Kardashian effect. I think that could be a course. Yeah. I think that might be yeah. my, that might be my class. I love that. I would enroll. Yeah. <laughs> and I would, I would ha- obviously need more time because that was a very loaded answer, but I would need more time to like think about the psychology behind it and stuff like that. But there is so mm. much psychology behind it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It really reminds me of the devil wears Prada when they're talking about how fat, like it premieres at a fashion week and then it kind of goes down the like mid tier fashion brands and then yeah. ends up at like something that's like more affordable it's so interesting I was just thinking of like the Valentino hot pink looks like which is crazy you never would have seen like two celebrities wearing the same outfit on different red carpets but now they've kind of made that a thing just because it's the Valentino pink mm-hmm. and now all these other companies are making full monochromatic hot pink looks um, yeah yeah is the jumpsuit that you're talking about that Good American sells, is it that gray one that's sleeveless? Um, no, it's it's like pink. It looks just like the one Kim wore. Oh, wild. That's yeah. so wild. Yeah, yeah. It's just like when Uggs came out and everyone was like, uh, it's short for ugly and like I would never wear these. And it's like, right. no, and then we did wear them and now – they're back in style. <laughs> yes. I did a video about Uggs when they came out too. I, I can like dig them up. I did a juicy one in Uggs, like how it was like crazy that people wore them and Beyonce wore Uggs to the Super Bowl. Like yeah, iconic. in the early 2000s. Like yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. But that is. I love Uggs. Do you follow at Kardashian underscore colloquium? Yes. Yeah. Love her. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah, me too. I'm addicted. I'm like, you are actually teaching a class and I yeah. am enrolled in it. Like Yeah, it, she should actually so teach. She should yeah, teach yeah. class. I'll do a different one. Yeah. That's amazing. So today we're gonna talk about our favorite two thousands girls. Just check in to see what people are doing. Uh we're gonna talk about the Selena Gomez documentary, My Mind and Me, Bumper in Berlin. I just had to talk to someone about this. And then Diane is going to nominate a Pettyweight Champion of the Week and share her This Week in Petty story. So let's talk about some 2000s girls. I just feel like I don't want to like super talk about it because it's really sad, but I do want to mention Aaron Carter's passing and how a lot of teen stars have like Hillary Duff and Allison Stoner, like either responded to his passing and like show signs of support or like kind of start, try to restart a conversation about being child stars and the like really harmful impacts that it has on them. Yeah. Any, any thoughts on that before we like super dive into these girls? No, I am so sad about it though. Um, yeah. It's just so sad. I literally was on his TikTok live like the day before it happened. Like only watched yeah. a little bit of it and you could just tell that he was unhappy and not well. And yeah, it's crazy. I mean, he was, he was kind of like our, he was kind of like Justin Bieber. To us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. And I don't have much to say about it except for it's really sad. And I hope that he found peace. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he was an icon. I, I loved his, Love Triangle with Hilary Duff and Lindsay Lohan, and he was legend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about Lindsay Lohan. She has a new movie coming out this Friday called Falling for Christmas. Will you be watching that? Yes. As soon as <laughs> I like, I will wake up at like six thirty to feed my baby, and we will be watching it together. Um, <laughs> he's, he's gonna be so pop culture. Um, yeah. <laughs> I am so excited. I love the resurrection of Lindsay Lohan. I could talk about it all day. Like she has just come back like with a vengeance. She's in Cosmo. She did a Vogue interview. She was on Good Morning America this morning. 
Um, I love that she's back to her roots, literally with the red hair. I think mm-hmm. that that like, I think that that like brought her back to old Lindsay and she's, she's married. She seems happy. And I'm just so happy. I think that yeah. she's, I think it's like, she was so far gone. It seems like if you watch the Lindsay beach club. Um, oh yeah. She just was not well. <laughs> yeah. And she seems like she's in such a good place. And I like the Cosmo and the Vogue of it all makes me think that she's like, this is just the beginning of her second yeah. life of her, like her second life. She's getting a yeah. second, a second win. Yeah. I love it. I'm stoked for her too. Cause again, t- like child stars that had a rough go and like a tough family life and addiction yeah. and all of those things, but she looks so good. And she, so good. yeah, I, I loved her outfit on GMA this morning and she just she looks like glowing and healthy and grounded and yeah, just thriving. Yeah. And she went through a lot. So, and she's still so young. I think she's like 35. So she has so much ahead of her. So I'm glad that she appears to have gotten it together or at least Mm -hmm. she has a really good team. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Totally. What about Cord Overstreet? He's the male lead in the Falling for Christmas yeah. movie. Like, are you stoked to see him? Or um, I, I do not care. I like <laughs> literally don't care about males. <laughs> like, yeah, in, yeah, in pop yeah. culture, like <laughs> yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I know. I was like, uh, I just like wish I mean, they picked someone different. Hot, but yeah, yeah. I don't know who would they have picked. Who would you have picked for? Him. Okay, mm-hmm. I would have picked Kay. Okay, I'm just gonna look his him up. I would have picked. Did you watch the Hating Game with Lucy Hale? No, but I heard of it. Okay, it came out last year on. Uh, I think it was Amazon Prime. Yeah, I remember. Heard and of it. the lead actor is Austin Stowell. Okay, Let's see I if should... he's in anything else. Um, he was in Dolphin Tale, Dolphin Tale 2, Whiplash, oh, wow. and Bridge of Spies. Oh, yeah. I just looked him up. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's very attractive. I would also enjoy that. Yeah, I, I feel like he would have been cute. Um, okay, he has some other things like The White Lotus. Also, he was on The, the Secret Life of the American Teenager, 90210. So he's been around for a while, but... Yeah, I just thought he would be cute. I kind of court over street. I'm just like, mm, you're it's fine. You're fine. You're yeah. there. But Lindsay's really the star. Yeah, maybe she needed her main character moment. Yeah, she yes. she did need. She needs this. This is like this is big for her. It is. Have you listened to the accompanying song? <laughs> Jingle Bell <laughs> Jingle Bell Rock. Yes. 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 I. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think it was it was jingle bell rock it was good yeah yeah I just listened to it before we hit record and I was like okay this is like cute sure I'll add it to my like Christmas playlist yeah of all my pop girlies like you know yeah Hillary Kelly Mariah and um, then I got to the rap section. And oh, I, well, maybe I didn't yeah. listen to the whole thing. I mean, I just heard the part that was like on Good Morning America. So I didn't yeah. know there was rap. I will definitely yeah, check out. There, there's a full rap section from like, I'm assuming an unnamed artist. I don't think they're credited on the song. That's but so um, yeah, there was a little bit of a remix. But I totally realized today it's obviously the song that she performed in Mean Girls. Yes, that's. That was like the whole thing. Cause I think she said it was like kind of a joke. She said like, should we do that? And then they were like, wait, yeah, we should. And then I guess they did. That's so smart. Like I, cause I was like, this is kind of random, but I was like, this makes perfect sense. Yeah, it does. It all comes full circle. And Mean Girls, I feel like was her last like really iconic role. So to bring it all together. Yeah. Um, And it's part, this is part of a two deal Netflix thing that she has. So We'll see more Lindsay on our screens. I'm very excited. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be another Christmas movie or do you think it's just going to be? I hope not. I hope that she, I hope it's yeah, like, me too. I, I hope for her that it's a little bit more elevated. Yeah. Because I just think that she's like making all of these steps towards being, she's already, she is A-list like forever in my book. Yes. But like, 
yes has become like a big feature film actress I think she needs like a little bit more than a Christmas movie yeah 100 percent. what do you think Vanessa Hudgens thinks of because she is the the Netflix Christmas girl do you think she feels like Lindsay's coming for her oh my god she is coming for her neck yeah they just they probably she probably needs to reinvent the wheel a little bit we're like three of the same movie now um with Vanessa so (laughs) which I love every bit of it but yeah she needs some she needs something else I think she also needs to elevate and I think she's super A-list too but she just hasn't Mm -hmm. she can't quite get over the Christmas movie threshold so um yeah we'll see what we'll see what she does but she seems she seems super happy did you see her outfit at the what is it that Ken and all of them were at last night it was like the fashion award this yeah cfda yeah cfda fashion awards vanessa vera wing fit was amazing she looked she looked okay, so good but i yeah you have to go look at it okay i'll have to look it up next on our list we have amanda Bynes. amanda she yeah what do you think about this move so she is enrolled in cosmetology school she is and it's just it's just so normal. <laughs> I follow her Instagram yeah. and she'll post like, it's, it's so bad. She's so bad at Instagram. <laughs> and it'll just be like a fake plastic hand with like a manicure. And she'll be like learning acrylics today. And yeah, it's just so interesting. I feel like she's in a really bad spot and I want her to get that resurrection that Lindsay had. I think she needs, if she wants mm. that, maybe she wants to be out of the spotlight, which I think maybe, that is what she wants. So whatever makes her happy, yeah. I guess, makes me happy. But I would, but personally, selfishly, I would love to have her back in the spotlight because me too. she was my absolute favorite. She's so funny, so yeah. beautiful. But yeah. I would love for her to be my nail. She just, yeah, me too, me too. I wonder if she's going to be good at that. I don't know. <laughs> from the like... looks of it, from the looks of it, uh, she's definitely still learning. <laughs> So she graduated from FIDM and then she just did like a little, a pivot to cosmetology school. Yeah. Like, I guess they're, that's all like kind of interrelated, yeah, it's but it's creative. Yeah, I don't know what to I, say. I wish her all the best. Well, I just think again, like all of these, like our connections, I really feel like to this like child stardom. Piece, right. Like they're all, they're trying yeah, to find, I just think- they're all looking for something that will make them happy and a lot of them are looking in the wrong places yeah. unfortunately but yeah yeah and I wonder if like part of this like Amanda trying different things and stuff is like so I was listening to Back to the Beach with uh Lauren Conrad Kristen Cavallari and Stephen <gasps> Coletti yeah. I want um, to listen morning. to that yeah you have to it's like it wasn't groundbreaking like it wasn't like Lauren revealed like a billion like secrets and stuff like that um and it wasn't even like a dramatic bearing of the hatchet between her and Kristen but they were talking about how Lauren felt kind of ripped off that she didn't get to explore college because she said she went to San Francisco but she had a boyfriend in San Diego and she was still filming in Laguna so she was only in San Francisco for four days a week so she was like I didn't really get to like have a college experience and then she was like then I went to fit um but also the hills was starting so I ended up dropping out and like just filming the hills and stuff like that and she's like I didn't really get to explore other things and I wonder if it's the same with people like Amanda Bynes and Lindsay Lohan of just like they don't yeah. get those like exploration years right like what would they have done had they not been child star that makes sense but I don't know I kind of have a bone to pick with Lauren Conrad because I kind of think that even if she had the chance to go to college I don't think that she would have I, she she was always gonna she's talking about just there following a guy I mean she, did, yeah, she yeah, didn't go to yeah. Paris that's all I have to say yes, so yeah. what what makes totally, she didn't go to Paris totally. I don't think she would have gone to college she is always gonna follow a man yeah, that's such a good point yeah I I have many bones to pick with Miss Miss Elsie yeah but, I have bones to pick with Chris yeah too. I just thought that was interesting oh. they're yeah, so me annoying too, me too me too <laughs> me too <laughs> Okay, next on our list is Jessica Simpson. So, okay, she's really come, I also think is like kind of on a comeback. 
And she's been posting like some videos on social media and people were really like concerned about just the way that she looked and the way that she was talking. Yeah. What do you think's going on with Jessica Simpson? I don't know. So I, did you read her book? Because I thought it was one of the best celebrity memoirs like ever. I thought it was so good. I only, I'm pretty sure I only listened to the celebrity memoir book club episode. I don't think I read it. That's all you need. That's all you need. Um, I actually read it. Truly. um, But I read way less now that that, now that I've discovered that podcast. Um, Same, same, same. So it was so good. They're remaking it into either a movie or a series. And yes, you're right. A a TV series. Yeah, I'm so excited for it. You know, she's always been up and down in her weight. I kind of relate to that a little bit. She does look very skinny. To me, she looks just like her sister when she's like skinny, but that's besides the point. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. She, in the Pottery Barn ad, she did sound a little, I don't know, it was like a little disturbing, but hopefully maybe she was just like, I don't I I, I was going to say hungry, but I don't want to get canceled for that because like I, when I'm like, when I don't, when I'm really hungry, sometimes like my voice sounds like that. That's just like I'm not saying that just because she's skinny. I'm literally just saying that. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, you mean that or like she thirsty, seemed or like, like thirsty or something, oh, or like like she I needed see what you're like saying. water in her mouth or like something. Oh, I that's see. what I should. Yeah, because people were saying that. Like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Like, I think people know that you're talking about because um, it seemed like a like little deep the... and like a little shaky. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. People were saying it was like a little shaky, a little deep, a little slow more than usual. So yeah. um, maybe she was really nervous. Uh, yeah. She could have just, it could have been nerves. Yeah. She could have been parched. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It, she, it was, she seemed not well, but yeah. I, but I don't know. Cause after the book, I'm like, Oh my God, she's in such a good place. But also that was like two years ago. So Hopefully she's still in a good yeah, place. Yeah, because she's sober. Yeah. She's sober. Like, sh- she decided to be sober and after the book. Yeah, and even in the book. During the process of the I book. Love, I love yeah. that she said in the book that, like, right now she's sober. She might get to a place where she can have a drink again. Yeah. And I thought that was really real. And it kind of it kind of leaves yeah. an open door to, like, no judgment as well. Like, if she or if, like, have a glass yeah. of wine, like, nobody's going to come for her. Um, yeah. So – yeah, but I don't know what's going on with her. I mean, she looks she looked beautiful. Yeah. Like her skin's flawless. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I I wish her all the best. I love her kid Birdie's relationship with Northwest. Same. <laughs> it's they are the they're the future. They're the little they're the little Paris Lindsays that we really need. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. One hundred percent. Yeah. We're we'll be following them in a few. Yeah. Years. <laughs> I'm already like glued to Northwest TikTok. So yeah. Me too. Me too. I watch every single one, even though they're like basically all they're the crazy. Same. Honestly, they should come with a warning. And I put it. I did a TikTok about this. It totally flopped. But like the like the flashing lights and like the crazy movement. I'm yes. Like, they're getting so many views. TikTok needs to put like a warning on these. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Okay, let's shift gears to Selena Gomez's documentary, My Mind and Me. What did you think about the documentary? Oh my God, it was, I thought it was really good in the sense that it was very entertaining because she just spilled so much tea. But I didn't know she was so, like, sad. She just seemed so sad to me. Yeah. And that made me sad. And she seems like she... I don't know. It it didn't make her look that good, in my opinion. It kind of made her look a little bitchy. Like, everyone's talking yeah. about the friend thing. Like, yeah, ha- how she kind of called her out a little bit. And I think she definitely needs that. And I think Selena might just be, like, attracted to people that tell her what she wants to be, wants to hear is what it, I got from that. Like, who is in a little bit? But um, mm-hmm. it was just really sad. But I love that she was open about her mental health. I think that can... It Mm -hmm. can and will help a lot of people um, start that conversation Mm -hmm. if they need it. And I think she knows exactly what she needs to do. Like, obviously, she needs, like, helping people is what fulfills her purpose and, like, the Kenya trip and everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like she needs to just, like, do philanthropy and just quit the acting and singing scene because it obviously makes her miserable. Um, yeah, that was like my takeaway too, is like, I feel like a lot of celebrities, so I've been watching the Kardashian season two, obviously, obviously. and then this documentary, 
And like, I just feel like a lot of celebrities have been complaining and like not saying that they can't complain about like, I feel like Kendall and Kylie specifically have been saying this and Courtney in the past have been, has said like, I don't like this life. I don't want to do this. Like this makes me miserable. And it was kind of like the vibe I was getting from Selena. And I was like, you really don't have to do this. Like you could completely quit yeah, and just do like you said, philanthropy or Kendall can flip her houses. It's like you have millions of dollars and especially the Kardashian right. millions of dollars like around and royalties them. forever. Like for just different royalties forever. And that's a good point. Like Selena too. And I just thought I'm like, you really don't have to continue this aspect of your career. Yeah, I agree. I don't. Yeah. They should stop complaining. <laughs> it's not a, it's yeah. not a good look. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's like in all of us, like for me it's too, like helping people makes me happy and like kind of fulfills a purpose. So it, if that's what makes her happy and she wanted to keep going back and she obviously didn't want to be doing these interviews, then she should do more of that. Because if not, she's just yeah. going to spiral again. Yeah, totally. Totally. Have you heard the rumors that in addition to like, she obviously talked a lot about her bipolar disorder diagnosis and her lupus diagnosis Have you heard, like, the blind items and, like, the rumors that she also did a lot of drugs during her, like, Justin Bieber hating? Yeah, and I believe it. Yeah, me too. So not that I thought in this documentary she was going to be like, I used to use drugs, but a lot of people have been talking about how maybe Raquel, which was the friend that we mentioned, could have been, like, her sober companion or just, like, I don't know, that she – she didn't talk about th- that at all. And I, I just thought that was like interesting. Yeah, she didn't talk about. Uh, yeah, maybe she still tr- struggles with it. And that's why she didn't talk about it. Um, yeah. Because I don't know. I feel like once you're hooked on drugs, you're it's it's really hard to get off. Um, but mm. yeah, Raquel did seem to be the only one that was, you know, gave her any pushback at all. So I can see her being a sober companion. Maybe she is. Um she definitely needs it. She definitely did drugs. I mean, all of them do. And the song Sober. And then just like, mm. it just seems like a lot of things about her personality. Um, I also heard that like the whole kidney transplant was like drug related, but that's a, bl- I, it's a blind I heard item. That too. Yeah, yeah. I heard that too because obviously Francia Raisa donated her kidney to Selena which again was vi- was weirdly kind of left out of the documentary like they kind of briefly mentioned it oh, but really? like they didn't talk about it too often um I do talk about this in my episode this episode is going to be 118 and I do talk about it in a little bit in 117 so we don't have to get super into it but I like have talked about this in the past how after the kidney transplant they were posting lots of pictures and like still obviously friends and then there was like several years where they weren't seen together right didn't comment on like social media etc and Francia continued to post about um like donating organs etc but like wouldn't mention Selena and post like solo shots then they reunited at Selena's 30th birthday and then Francia commented on one of the the TikToks like a TikTok clip about how she was talking about how Taylor was her only um friend in the industry but there are tons of blind items that say that Francia was upset post-surgery that Selena was like maybe possibly continuing using drugs or like abusing alcohol and that's why they had a fall that's what yeah I heard that as well I think Francine is something that we definitely don't and Selena needs to be nice to her or she's gonna spill the tea um I hope she does spill the tea that's a good point yeah I would be pissed too she literally gave her an organ an irreplaceable Mm -hmm. like gift like that's the best gift you could ever give someone is like something that you actually need. I know you have two, but like if one fails, you gave your other one away. So you're yeah. a little, you're screwed. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think like seeing Selena Gomez on TikTok drinking wine all the time and stuff like that. 
I never really thought about it, but she is drinking a lot, which mm-hmm. like, so do I casually. So it's, it's yeah. fine. No judgment. But yeah. um, the yeah. fact that she's like watching her kidney, <laughs> just like, <laughs> she's like, that's my kidney. I would have treated it better than you. Give it back. I don't know. It's kind of awkward, right? <laughs> totally. Totally. She also didn't mention like 13 reasons why, which was like pretty com- controversial or like any of her other projects, like her new show only murders yeah. in the building. And then her chef show. I don't know. Do you think she like left out too much or do you think there's just too much to cover in the 90 minutes? Like what? what do yeah, you think? maybe. Yeah. Maybe she needed like a whole series because she did leave all of that out. Um, now I'm like, what did she talk about? She did leave a lot out. Literally, literally. Cause like she talked about rare and, um, you know, there was like the different award shows and yeah. performances, like the AMAs and stuff that she talked about. And, um, yeah, the trip to Kenya and, but yeah, I was like, there's so much that you in the past six years that's happened that you aren't talking yeah, about. Yeah. Maybe those projects were just like not problematic for her and she just shared like the problem the problematic yeah. thing that she's doing yeah yeah so maybe acting is better for her mental health than singing yeah yeah that's true that's true it does seem like she um likes acting better than yeah. singing she's better for her I like only murders have you watched it no I, think it's I pretty haven't good. I haven't but I should, you should. I it should. made me should. like her more I never didn't like her but it definitely made me like her more what I did think yeah. was I thought that I would – I thought this was going to make me like Hailey Bieber less because, you know, the Call Her Daddy interview and everything. And then mm-hmm. and then they took a picture together, which was iconic. I thought this would make mm-hmm. me like Hailey Bieber less. I think it made me like her more. Yeah, yeah. Like I know. Selena Gomez, I've always been a fan. But – and I, I again, I'm not saying I'm not a fan anymore, but – yeah, know. and I always thought that, like, <laughs> Justin know. was the problem, but, like, why yeah. do I think Selena was the problem now? I don't know. I think they both were It was a bad relationship. And, like, but... they had – it was, like, possible drug use, the, like, extremist churches, yeah. and the child stardom again. I just think it, it was, was really bad. He's, yeah. He and Haley seem to be in a very good place. Selena, I think she's still working on it i wish i wish yeah, she, like agreed i wish taylor swift was in the documentary me too that was another thing i was really surprised that yeah she i need i need more of their relationship because i think taylor me too. has to be good for her right like i think taylor's like very yeah straight edge like not into any of that yeah i don't think she, i think she's totally yeah. not into the drugs or anything i think she's just like a girl's girl mm-hmm. like drinks wine and has fun and yeah she has a very mature group of friends Agreed. And same with Joe, it seems like. Yeah. So, yeah. Selena did have, like, a sleepover night with a bunch of girls for, um, like, to celebrate My Minded Me. And the only person I recognized was Nicola Peltz Beckham. And I was like – and Brooklyn yeah. Beckham was there. And I was, like, shocked. Yeah, he was, like, making martinis for them. Yeah. I'm so confused. And I, like, Googled it. I was like – Selena Nicola relationship timeline friendship timeline like how how did that happen like I don't Selena wasn't at her wedding um because I followed that wedding very closely I know it was just incredibly chic yes. and like Palm Beach and it was just a vibe so weird I think it's like Nick I think it's so like Selena's weird. like so famous and Nicola wants to be and she's telling Selena what she wants to hear like another thing like Selena loves enablers it seems like um and maybe mm-hmm. that the relationship. I don't know. But Nicola seems to yeah. be like about to be like a groundbreaking actress. So we'll see. Yeah, for sure. Her and Brooklyn, I feel like, have been trying to reach the spotlight for yeah. a really long time. And she's in the so. new series that comes out this yeah. month where she plays, I think it's Dorothy Stratton, who was the playmate mm. that was like killed by her husband. Cause he was like super jealous. She was a Playboy playmate in like the seventies or eighties. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, and Nicola plays it's her, and, tragic. and it looks like it's a really like high production series. I think it'll be on Netflix. So I think that could be her 
or maybe it's Hulu. But that might be her groundbreaking role. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good yeah. Time. Go. You go stalk her Instagram. <laughs> like it, she looks. It looks like it'll be good. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's awesome. Any other things you want to share about the Selena doc? I don't think so. I just hope that she gets into a good. Um. I was. I watched a documentary. Mm-hmm. I think. I think it was about Audrey Hepburn, and mm-hmm. her life. And she was just so mm-hmm. graceful and just seemed like she lived with grace like her whole life. And even like to the day she died, she was really into philanthropy and giving back with uh, UNICEF mm-hmm. and seemed to be happy because of that. And I think that I would love to see Selena kind of go towards that route because I think she is, she can be graceful and classy. She just needs to, you know work on herself a little bit who doesn't we all yeah. do but um yeah yeah I would love totally, to see her go totally. that route and yeah. not like the opposite I agree I agree yeah that's a good point I think the the last question that I have or that I was left with after this documentary is she did say she was like dating around but like it doesn't seem like she has had or has a serious boyfriend right, right? uh yeah and hasn't since wait no she dated who did she date the weekend yeah. Which yeah, I think was PR. I heard yeah, rumors of her yeah. and Cara Delevingne, who yes, also doesn't yes, seem to be yes, in a good place. Yeah. So hopefully that's not true. No, um, that, I know, be, I know that could be toxic. Yeah, yeah, she needs she needs a good man. Yeah, okay, or one. Let's talk about a good per- a good person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good point. Good point. Thank you. But let's talk about Pitch Perfect bumper in Berlin. So. I found this like last night when I was just like searching like fun things to talk about in pop culture. And I was like shook to my core because I had never heard of this. But there is a pitch perfect spinoff movie starring Adam Devine and Sarah Hyland where Adam Devine is reprising his role as Bumper, the acapella singer. But apparently he's like viral in Berlin. So a music like company flies him out to Berlin to like try to start his career as like a solo singer what do you think about this were you a big pitch perfect um I feel like I was for a little bit like when the first movie came out but I can't really remember so I guess I wasn't too big of a pitch perfect girl and I hadn't heard of this until you sent over the notes and then I looked it up and I love Adam yeah he's hilarious um, Me too. Ever since Workaholics, like, he's one of my favorites. Um, so I'll definitely be watching it. I'm actually more excited for this than, like, the second Pitch Perfect and maybe third. I don't even think I watched a third if there was one. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of more excited about this than Falling for Christmas. Me too. <laughs> like, I, I think it's, it's going to be really yeah. funny. Um, so I'm here for it. I'll watch yeah. it for sure. Yeah, I'll definitely watch it. It seems cheesy. It's, like, a bunch of, like, fake October – I best uh, like stages which I actually just went to Oktoberfest this year so oh, I'm like fun. I feel like I have a in Ger- connection in Germany? to it oh my god I'm so jealous. yeah yeah it was super super fun so I'm like okay I'm, I'm ready to yeah. relive that and then I totally forgot that Adam Devine played Andy on Modern Family Sarah one of Sarah Hyland's love interests so they're oh. kind of like the new uh, like maybe Drew Barrymore and and Jimmy not Jimmy Fallon um Adam Sandler or yeah Adam Sandler thank you that's you know that's good or like Jen Aniston yeah I yeah we need need more of that actually we really need more of that so that's that's a good point so I'm very very excited but it does beg the question for me like did we need this because I feel like this is a little bit of a stretch like maybe if they release this the year after Pitch Perfect 3 I'd be like yeah this makes sense but like I feel like this was like this is like eight years later and it's been such a long time and I feel like just like I don't know movies just seem I actually like rarely watch movies nowadays because they just a lot of them just seem so like the same thing like yeah it's an oh it's another Marvel movie oh it's another pitch perfect like themed movie like I just I don't need yeah this. okay it's, so this is a, a movie not a series bumper and uh, okay yeah yeah um, I think I think it's a, I think it's a movie um on okay cool Peacock. um yeah I think they need to promote it a little bit better because I hadn't heard of it until you brought it up so 
but I, yeah. I think people will watch it because I think Adam Devine has like a pretty strong fan base. Seems like true, true, um, true. That's a really good point, and he's just so funny. So yeah, no need to promote it really well, but I think I think it's needed. I always love when something's filmed in Europe too, or anywhere. Like I just Me I like too. scenery. I'll definitely watch it. Agreed. Yeah, me too. I'll be tuning in. Okay, so we have made it to the part of the show called Pettyweight Champion of the Week, where Diana is going to nominate a Pettyweight Champion of the Week, someone in the media who did something petty and it was iconic. Who are you nominating? I actually week? was going to nominate two people. Fran- Francia. Nice. Uh, Raisa. Okay, I always say it wrong. Yes, Raisa. Because she, she unfollowed Selena. Yes. So we love yes, that. Indeed. Selena still follows her. <laughs> and Taylor Swift because I'm obsessed with her and she just released an album and it's just about everyone. She's coming for everyone's neck. Scooter Braun, Scooter Braun's yes. wife, Kanye, yes. John Mayer again. Mm-hmm. She's she's like my I think she might be like the queen of petty. I mean you would definitely nominate the queen of petty, but like she's so petty. <laughs> I agree 100%. I really feel like she profits. She profits off the pay. um, So, yes. Love it. 100%. What do you think was like her pettiest lyric or moment or song from the Um, night? Vigilante shit for sure. Talking about how she like gave the proof that Scooter Braun cheated to the wife and that. Do you think that's. Yeah. 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 Do you think that's true? Um, That she did that? I'm. I'm yeah. not sure. I think it's true that he cheated, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. His wife was just like perfect in every way. I don't know. I hope it's, I hope it's true, but yeah, I don't know. It's but it also I feel like Taylor Swift makes up stories in her head, like that she wished she would have done, because she knew that he cheated, and she's like, you know, now she's driving in his Benz and dressing for revenge, and mm-hmm. yeah, I love it. I love that song so much. It's, it's so, so good. good. It's really good. Yeah, and I like how she says Spider Boy, which I think is a reference to Scooter yeah. Braun. It has to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think a, lo- a lot of this is about Scooter. And yeah, I love it. Yeah, it makes sense with the F- FBI crimes because he's in a yeah. lawsuit right now. And then the wife, for sure. Yeah. I wonder how she's doing. I, I haven't like... Yeah, so much I stopped her, her Instagram recently. the other day because of the song, and she seemed to be doing fine, going to like galas and events mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah. it's sad because her husband sucks. Yeah, so. and she also is a big yeah. philanthropist. I, think she I, is I too. believe. Yeah, yeah, I think she posted a picture with Haley Bieber. Yeah, interesting. So. Interesting. I guess that makes sense because Justin and Scooter. Yeah. And Scooter so they would have been friends, yeah, probably. For sure. Yeah. Interesting. Well, those are two great Pettyweight Champions of the Week. So let's wrap up with This Week in Petty, where our guest will share a story about something that happened in their real life that they are petty about. What are you petty about this week? Um, This isn't like super petty, but I posted about a sweatshirt. Like um, sometimes I make sweatshirts and like drop ship them and they just say, honestly, those are all petty. Oh, yes. Okay. I saw your on your like um in your a link in your bio. Anyways, people are like, don't you have anything better to do with your time? Or like, who gives a F? Go to work. And I mean, this isn't that petty, but I said I will after maternity leave. Because <laughs> people are like, go to work. But no, um, you're like, I, I have a job. It's raising well, that, child. And it was like, <laughs> it was literally about like merch that I made that like I'm making money off of. So it was just funny. And then just like everyday life, I'm petty all the time because I feel like, you know, I'm like momming 24 seven. So like, I can't be bothered with like Mm -hmm. any real life things. So my poor, my poor husband gets like the brunt of all my pettiness. And so you posted about merch because you have a TikTok following and people are buying your merch. And then you were showing off your sweatshirts and then someone, multiple people were like, go back to work. Why are you doing this? Yes. Who gives the F go to work? God, that's so um, brutal. Uh, please go do something. There was a lot of comments. Like, please go do something better than this. And I said, okay. Because <laughs> I, I made one about the queen's corgis. Because when the queen died, her corgis were left to Prince Andrew, who is so problematic. And so I made a right. God Save the Corgis sweatshirt. 
I and love that. That is petty. Yeah, that, was, that was petty, actually. The God made save the corgis. I was just going to say, that in itself Yeah, is and my, my dad drew the corgis, and I put them on a sweatshirt and just put God save the corgis under it. That was pretty petty. Yeah. And then people were just like, please go do something better than this. And I just said, okay. And then somebody said, go make sweaters <laughs> to save the world. Look what's going on. Not some dogs. I, I oh said, what's God. going on? And then someone said... Who gives a F? Go to work. I said, I will after maternity leave. And then someone said, there's no way you can't find something better to do with your life. And I said, I can't. I tried. And then someone <laughs> someone said, shut the F up. And Oh, my God. Yeah. People are and someone so responded mean. to that person and it's said, so she's just promoting her sweatshirts. I was like, Thank you, Queen. Yeah. Honestly, people are so wild. So wild. Like, you only see a sliver of, like, like your life. And... And also it's like, yeah, you never know what's like going on in your life. In this case, you, yeah, I'm on mat leave and. Yeah, actually the corgis, the corgis, the corgis, literally we drew them in the hospital because my son was having a liver biopsy. So I wanted to, I, I could have said that, but I didn't. So it's just like, yeah, yeah, you literally never know what's going on in someone's life. Like, so it's just crazy. Totally. And like people can do creative outlets that still can like yeah. I don't know I I hate when people like have this moral judgment on people's jobs like right when um, I like I literally didn't even yeah. take a maternity leave I did less hours but like I worked the whole time I didn't yeah. have paid maternity leave like this is America <laughs> we don't and especially in the mm-hmm. south but mm-hmm. yeah it's just crazy because but like honestly I it doesn't really that bother me cool. I think it's funny like their pettiness yeah. it's it's, you had good responses. It's fun. I feel like. like I don't have any fans. I only have trolls, so it's 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 fine. It's very it's very niche. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm a fan Thank of you. your TikTok. <laughs> I'm trying. But I yeah, I, I can't believe people do that. That's so wild. so wild. Yeah. I don't know. People are just trying to like make something joyous and like fun and easy to consume. And yeah. people are yeah, it just yeah. can't be nice. About it's it. Gen Z. Something it. something happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like we should wrap up there. Um, thank you so much for coming on and spending some time with me. Uh, where can the listeners find you and anything else you want to um, You can find me on TikTok at Diana True, um, D I A N A T R U E. It's my old last name, but I'm not changing my handle. Um, Instagram, Diana <laughs> True. I post more on TikTok than Instagram, but, and then, YouTube, Diana Drew, I am going to start posting more on YouTube. I think if if I I'm gonna try. Nice. Because you never know when nice. TikTok's gonna get banned again. So Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, YouTube's a hard not to crack. It is like. but the shorts are I have worked a couple of times for me. So Yes, yes. Okay, go follow Diana. Well thank you. Thank again you so, so much. much. This is fun. Me. I'll talk about pop culture anytime with you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much for listening. And thank you to Diana for joining me on today's episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can leave me a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And or Spotify. (laughs) What does that do other than pump my ego? It helps RTBP climb the podcast like charts. It's like Billboard hot 100 but for podcasts and that means that you know more big guests recognize my show as like valid and I find new listeners find new patrons which means I can pump more resources into the show make better content have you know longer interviews and all of that fun stuff so I super appreciate it when you leave a rating and review on Apple or Spotify thank you again so much for listening I hope you are safe and healthy out there As always, I'm your host, Tori, and I'm ready to be petty. See you soon. Bye.